everyone, this is Karen from the Historical Society of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And in this month's video, I thought we would talk about a small section of, or a small faction of Mennonites uh, that are no longer around today, but were uh, based in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Uh, this group was known as the Funkites uh, because they were named uh, after the pastor that uh, caused the schism in the Mennonites. His name was Christian Funk. So they hybrid, they uh, abbreviated the name between Funk and Mennonite to get the name Funkite. Now, the Funkites were based in Franconia Township, and they weren't around for very long. They were a very small faction of Mennonites in the area, and they practiced the religion from 1778 to 1850, thereabouts. So before we get too deep into who the Funkites were, I think it's important for us to take a step back and understand uh, where the Mennonites came from, since the Funkites were a split in the Mennonite church. So the Mennonites came into being in around the 16th century over in Europe. There was a split in the Christian church at that time, and the Anabaptists, which is what they called themselves, uh, split from other Christian groups to because they had disagreements with things like uh, separation of church and state, and uh, they didn't think you should baptize children. You thought They thought that you had to uh, profess your belief in Jesus Christ in order to become a member of the church. These Anabaptists eventually became known as Mennonites due to a Dutch Roman Catholic priest who converted over to their religion. His name was Menno Simmons, hence the name Mennonite. He became a very well-known preacher for the Anabaptists, and after he died in 1561, they did change their names to Mennonites in honor of him. So. Bishop Christian Funk of Franconia Township. Uh, he was first ordained minister in 1756 and he became a bishop of the Mennonite Church in 1769. Now at first when uh, talk of war between the colonies and Great Britain uh, came into Franconia Township, uh, Bishop Funk did side with the rest of his church uh, that they're Mennonites, they shouldn't get involved, they practice uh, non-resistance, uh, not alleging oaths or anything like that. However, after reading the Pennsylvania Constitution, Bishop Funk changed his mind because he realized that the Pennsylvania Constitution allowed people to have full religious liberty. And in Funk's eyes, they came to Pennsylvania to escape religious persecution in the first place. So it only made sense for them to side with the Americans because if the Americans won, then they would be granted that religious freedom, whereas if Great Britain won, they might experience the same persecution they had fled years before in Europe. So when Bishop Funk started uh, proclaiming to his Mennonite congregation that they should be siding with the Americans in the revolution, the other bishops basically told him he had to step down because he was no longer following the rules and expectations of pacifism in their religion. Ultimately, when he refused to step down, they excommunicated him in 1778. When this happened, 
he and 52 followers essentially split from the Mennonite church to form the Funk Mennonites, also referred to as the Funkites, which is quite a fun name if I do say so myself. And at first they held their meetings at the same Mennonite, uh, the same Mennonite church in Franconia. They would just hold it on alternate days when the Mennonites were not using the building. Eventually they were kicked out of that building. They were locked out and didn't have a place to worship. And it's believed that they uh, practiced their religion at various members' houses until they were able to get their own building for the Funkites. And this is a notable split because, to the best of my knowledge, it's the very first time you see a split in the American Mennonite religion. And it happened right here in Franconia, Montgomery County. Between 1778 and 1806, 10 of the bishops at the Franconia Mennonite Church passed away and six newly ordained bishops replaced them. When this happened, the new bishops uh, wanted to bring uh, Funk and his followers back into the Mennonite religion. However, they were not able to convince him to do so because they wanted to receive him as a transgressor and he basically said, I'm not doing that, I'm right, and we should be supporting the revolution, so we, I'm not going to do that. And he also didn't want to come back because they refused to recognize his brother John, his brother Henry, and his son-in-law, John Detweiler, who he had made uh, ministers and deacons uh, in his new Funkite church. So the Funkites were able to erect at least four, maybe five, it depends on which accounts you're looking at, uh, uh, churches for their congregation, and most of them seem to have been in the Evansburg and Franconia areas of Montgomery County. And when Funk died in 1811, their numbers did start to dwindle a bit because they didn't have a strong leader anymore. Eventually, uh, Henry Funk moved to Virginia and Jacob Detweiler moved to Ontario. This led to basically there was no one to lead the church, essentially. So it's estimated that the last Funkite uh, passed away around 1850, and then after that, they just kind of disappear. Two of the Funkite meeting houses were torn down, and one of them got transferred over to the Church of the Brethren. After Funk died, and there was no longer a strong leader, for the Funkite Mennonites. Uh, many of them continued to worship as best they could, and over time they either uh, passed away or they ended up joining other local churches. Some of them went back to local Mennonite churches, others joined places like the Church of the Brethren, which had purchased uh, one of their meeting houses. So one of the few places left that are still standing today that have any connection to the Funkites is the Funkite Cemetery, which is in Evansburg, PA, right next to Germantown Pike. It's actually very well hidden. It's in the Evansburg State Park, and it's not particularly easy to get to, but it is still there. So this cemetery uh, was part of the Evansburg Funkite Meeting House, house, which was built roughly 1815 at the east end of Evansburg. Abraham Funk and his wife deeded this lot to John Funk, who was a minister and brother to Christian Funk, who started the Funkites. In roughly 1870, the meeting house was torn down, 
and stones from the building were used to build the wall around the cemetery, which is still there today. Most of the burials at this cemetery date between 1815 and 1837. Unfortunately, there aren't too many markers that remain to this day, and many of them are very hard to read. However, you can visit this cemetery as it is part of the Evansburg State Park. Funding for this video has been provided by the Pennsylvania Humanities Council and the National Endowment for the Humanities as part of the Coronavirus Relief and Economic Security Act of 2020.